All right, here yep. we here we go, man. Ali in the building. Yeah, I appreciate that, Paul. <laughs> yes, sir. yes, sir. Ali, man. Um, so the situation with uh, the young lady, her name is Ro Reports. You know, yep. big big story blowing up the internet. Um, a lot of you know, a lot of sides to this, man. A, a lot of sides. Some. Some saying it's a hoax. Some saying it's a fraud. Some, some believer. You know, I, I don't know. But after your after the story came out, you did a TikTok. You did a story time TikTok about uh, what happened to you with uh, with with the couple. But before yeah. we talk about that, what do you think of the situation now? Uh, it's been a couple of. It's been a well. It's been a week, uh, and whole bunch of stories is is coming about now. What's your thoughts on uh, on the situation as the story continues to unfold? Well, I did. Uh, I had actually come across a few of her posts before the incident, and and I did. I said. You know, I, this is not going to end well for this young lady. You know, like these things usually don't, you know, they, they don't end up transpiring into be, being something positive, you know, because she's a bit of a, a shock jock, I guess, is, is, is what I felt like she was going for. You know, you get you have these over the top antics and you get these reactions from people, you know, and um, I don't as a man. You know, and, and I'm, I'm trying to be as honest and transparent as a man. It's I don't want to be that man that that passes a man judgment or unfair judgment by saying, well, you know, if you look at the way she was hit and the way people get hit with bricks, you know, um, I think we as a people, just like in the Carly Russell situation, we shouldn't be so quick to react. You know, we, we, we need to give things a time to transpire, to, to gather. Because we as a people, we wouldn't want somebody to say, hey, you know, this person committed a, a crime or they wronged me. And then the police just automatically come arrest you. You're going to want the police to investigate and do their due diligence. You know, I do. As a, as a non-biased person in the situation. I find it odd that you're in a heavily populated area like that. And there were no initial witnesses. If you listen to the people in her background, even the women were saying, no, that didn't happen or we didn't see it. You know, and there's no camera footage. I've seen people get hit with bricks before. A brick does a great world of damage to somebody when you get hit with it, whether it's thrown or they have it in their hand. I'm not saying that she didn't get hit and maybe, you know, the way she swole up, she just, her body reacted differently to it. But I do think that we as a people need to make sure we get all the facts because as black people, there is a lot of division that is going on between men and men, women and women, and men and women. And by me being a black man and raising six black kids, three boys and three girls, you know, I want my sons to be treated just and fairly, and I want my daughters to be treated tr just and fairly and to be safe. You know, that's 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 for everybody. Um, I don't think it was karma what happened to her. If, if what happened happened, nobody should be hit with a brick for refusing somebody's advances. You know, if no is no. Um, but at the same time, if somebody's willing to hit you with a brick for you, saying no i don't think it's as black and white as just you know black men aren't protecting black women that's probably somebody who's dealing with a deep-rooted mental issue that has gone either undiagnosed or they're not being treated properly Back. so you know that's that's you know that's my take at it you know i'm not going to look at a man who hits a woman you know with a brick for turning down his number as this is the way all men behave i'm i'm i'm, I'm going to Air on the side of caution and say this this person needs some mental help. They should probably go to jail, but they need some mental help too because you have some aggression and some anger issues or something that you're not dealing with.
Excuse me. I happen to be passing. I thought you might like some coffee. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you. TikTok is dangerous. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to put it out there, man. TikTok is the matrix. I I said that uh, in a new video that I just posted. I, I said that TikTok is the matrix, man. Somebody could look a look and sound totally different when it comes to that app. We we already yep. you know we already experienced. I don't know if everybody experienced, but I seen. Uh, where the where the Caucasian woman came out and claimed that she was uh, falsely uh, well, it was false, but she was beaten up by uh, a black man using the black eye filter on the app. Yep, yep, yep. So it's kind of hard now, you know, with with Roe situation and with. And with the and with the uh, Caucasian woman situation, is it hard now to believe anybody that comes out on that app now? So you know, I I, I have a post sitting in my draft right now that I was going to make about how when people are on live, like I, people that I follow that have made lives about these particular topics. The way they feel when they're on live and they have a lot of viewers and a lot of people interacting with their lives. But then when you're talking to them on a personal level, their views change. So, yeah, I, I, I do. You know, TikTok is for entertainment. And a lot of people have, have gained, have, have been able to make money and gain a little bit of fame by going on TikTok, pretending to be something that they're not lying about being attacked and things of that nature. So, yeah, you know, I think when it is shared to a platform like that, we as adult, rational-minded people have to say, wait a minute, you, you know, <laughs> before we so quick to pass judgment, once again, let's do a little research. Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's see what the police are, are going to, to say about this. Because you think about the Carly Russell situation. There was a, a a man, and I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do my my hardest man to find it because I know he took his page down. But there was a, a detective, a black man who was a detective in Alabama, and he had been uh, a detective for 20 years, and he had been on the force for I think a total of 30 to 35 years in Alabama. And he said, "No, he said, no, this is BS." He said, "I'm a I'm a husband, I'm a father, and I'm a detective." And women ripped him apart. Oh, you're not just another black man that don't want to protect black women and yada, yada, yada. And then you look what happened. And this was a man who wasn't trying to be a villain. He wasn't trying to be evil. He wasn't being misogynistic. He just said, it's my personal experience, my professional experience that is saying this smells like BS. And, and so I asked people, what is so hard? What is so hard? Why is it so easy to want to vilify a, a, a group of people who have been villains since we came to this country? Like black men and black women have suffered together in this country. It, it's not, you know, like I, I'm trying to see what black men are seeing about black women that makes them think they've had it better than us. And what black women are seeing in black men to think that black men have, you know, are on the same social status as white men in this country. We both have been struggling together. And so when something happens like that in our community, instead of us coming, you know, finding a way to divide each other, we need to find a way to come together. And that's why I made my post. And, and, and I was, it wasn't the women that disappointed me about my post. If you go back and you look at the comments, it was the brothers that disappointed me. And the reason why I made the post was to show women, because it was a response to, to that young lady, to, to, to explain to women why it's not that easy for a man to jump in and help in those situations. But brothers was like, man, you a simp and you a chump and that's stupid. And I'm like, what are you guys missing? Where I'm, I'm, I made this post to be on your side. But we're just so quick to divide each other and want to be angry that we're not even listening to what, what each other is saying. 
half the time. Let's get into it. Let's talk about that post, man. Uh, how how long ago did that actually happen to you? It has been 20 years. It happened in 2003. It's been 20 years. And it was something. Yep, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it was, you know, and it was something that, like, that, you know, that, that took my livelihood away from me. Now, for those that don't know, um, and again, thank you, man, for coming on. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, for those that don't know, you uh, went over to your mom's house uh, to spend time with uh, with one of your youngster and your and your moms. And while you was there, you heard commotion over at the other house. Your moms yep. wanted to kind of you know, kind of intervene, but you was like, no, nah, mom, you know, you by yourself, you know, let's stay to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it spilled outside. Take us, take us from there. So, um, I was sitting on, we were sitting on my mom's porch and the young lady ran out the back of her house. She ran out of her sliding glass door and he came right behind her. And he grabbed her by the back of the shirt. She trying to get out the shirt. She ended up turning around facing him. He had her by the back of the shirt and she was bent over. And he, man, I mean, he gave, he, he hit her in the face two times, two uppercuts very hard. And she was out. I jumped up. I told my mom, take my son in the house, call 911. And I went out. He ran, when I got outside, he was already back inside the house. So I picked her up to bring her in my house. I was just coming from a gym where I worked, uh, uh, a, mars a mixed martial arts studio in Cobb County, Georgia. And so I actually had smelling salts in my bag. So my, the, the, my mindset was to bring her inside to see if I can wake her, you know, while the paramedics get here, you know, make sure she doesn't have any, you know, irreparable damage or something like that. When I was coming back into through my mother's garage, he was coming down the front of his steps and he's like, hey, man, what are you doing? I say, the police are on the way. I wasn't trying to confront this dude. I wasn't trying to be a hero, you know, or anything like that. I'm actually letting him know the police is on the way. And if I was you, I wouldn't be here. So he continues to walk up on me. Now I turn, I'm, I'm turning so that my back is not to him. When I turn, he grabbed me around my wrist. I, I swung around and she hit her head. I, and it was, you know, I had her in my arm, so it was my fault. But she hit her head on the side of the wall. And my mother had just hit the side of her garage. So the track was loose and there was a, a, a boat that was exposed. And then she did end up cutting her head on the boat and I dropped her. Me and him started fighting in my mother's garage. And somehow it, it got an awkward angle because we were tussling. There was no punches being thrown. We were kind of just gra grappling and jockeying for a position. And he kind of ended up like we almost made like a T-shape. And it was just natural instinct. You know, I, I kind of just went with it and end up like power bombing or, you know, a DDT on his head. Um, I ended up getting on top of him. I had, uh, I had my knees pinned down on his shoulders. So I was sitting kind of high on him and I, I started elbowing him in the top of the head and across his nose. I did punch him a few times. And what stopped me was a neighbor had, had then come across the street and stopped me. By that time, the paramedics was pulling up, the EMTs pulled up, and there was a lot of blood out there. It was a, it was a lot of blood. And, you know, it was a young lady. She was like, well, where's all the blood coming from? And I, I was very animated, you know, very excited. My heart was racing. So I was like, you know, it's him. I just beat his ass out here, you know. And she was like, no, it's you. You're bleeding. And I looked at my wrist, and I realized I was bleeding. At the time that you was pulled, the guy didn't care about the fact that the woman fell to the ground and hit her head. I mean, it wasn't like what what he he wasn't like. Hold hold on, my guy. Let me let me go in here and check on the let me let me check on my woman right quick to see if she's all right, and then I'll I'll calm no, down. I, or or let me he even didn't back even say let, anything let, to me. Let, let let me even <laughs> back it up even further. Uh, you. He went inside the house after he cold cocked her, right? 
I bought you a stamp. Thank you. Cream? No, thank you. I take it black. Like my man. Yeah, I thought because I thought because she fell and that he knew that she was out. I'm thinking he's getting ready to escape. So when he comes out the front of his house and he's walking towards me, that's why I'm like, yo, you should just leave. The police are coming. And he grabbed me. And when I pulled away, I didn't realize he had his keys in his hand. And that's what ended up. That's how I ended up getting cut that bad. It cut me through my carpal tunnel and everything. It cut me to the bone. Damn. It went through all, you know, through those, all those muscles, muscles and tendons in my hand. It cut me all the way to my bone. Wow. And you being, you know, you being so full of adrenaline, you, you didn't even know you was cut. No, but I think that's why I ended up dropping her though. Because the majority of her weight was on my left, was on my left side. And I think that's why I ended up dropping her the way that I did is because when I pulled away, they said it cut me through my tendons, my carpal tunnel and everything. So the thumb part of my hand and all that, man, it went numb and it was numb for, man, for a better part of a decade. It was about a good solid, about a good solid eight to 10 years, man, before I did gain about, I, I, I have a good range of motion with my, with, with my thumb and stuff right now, but it's not like my right hand. It's not a hundred percent. And I was originally left-handed. So I had to learn how to use my right hand as my dominant hand. I had to learn how to write, eat, and everything with my right hand. Wow. Man, so back so so back at the situation, I mean, again, the dude didn't even care about the woman. Now it was just now it was just getting at you. Just just because you you want you you helped out or wanted to help out the young lady, you know, to make sure she was all right. Now, now, dude, all his attention is on you now. Well, so when we, you know, there was a, you know, like say we, you know, police did get involved. I was arrested and everything. And so his story is what he told the police was that um, he was trying to check on her and that he was going to put her in his car and take him to the house, take her to the hospital. And that's why he confronted me is because he wanted to be the one to take her to the hospital. And there was a long line. There was a, you know, there was a long history of domestic violence between those two because he had, he had gone to jail in Georgia two times before on domestic violence cases pertaining to her. And in the state of Georgia, it doesn't matter if the woman presses charges, the state will automatically pick it up if it's a case of domestic violence. And at the time, he wasn't even supposed to be living with her because he had an open domestic violence case. So I do believe somewhat that he probably did want to get her and remove her from the scene to keep him from being in trouble. Mm. You did your thing with the man. Uh, police came. And you said you... You you was arrested after you was looked at? What why why you was arrested for? So I, I went to the hospital. Um, they stitched me up a couple of days later and I went to visit my mom. We stayed in, you know, I I lived in Cobb County at the time and I stayed right around the corner from my mom. I love my mom, you know, so I go check on my mom. Um so I went to go check on my mom, make sure she didn't need anything. Once again, her husband was still away on business. He's a, uh, a, he was at the time, he was a, a un, he was a union president for the post office. So he was away out of town. So I'm, you know, I go by, check on my mom, even though this happened, I'm still gonna make sure she don't need the garbage taken out, you know, things like that. And so when I went to my mom's house, I don't know if the police maybe didn't get my full information when I went to the hospital and didn't know where I live, but that's where they came and served the warrant. They were actually waiting on me to come back to my mother's house. So there was an undercover police officer that had been watching my mother's house. This is how serious it was. Like they put an undercover police officer to watch my mother's house. As soon as I pulled up shortly there, you know, shortly later, two plainclothes detectives knocked on the door, told me I had a warrant for my arrest. They handcuffed both my hands, which was, you know, it was only two days after this. You know, so I got stitches and, and a, a brace on my wrist. 
and they handcuffed me. Both my hands behind my back. I had to sit with my hands behind my back in the squad car. A few stitches busted open. They took me to the Cobb County Jail. My, my father-in-law, my stepdad, had to leave his business trip and come home. And my mother and my stepfather put their house up to, um, to get me out of jail. My, my bond, I thought, if I'm not mistaken, it was $500,000, which we only had to pay 12% of that, but they just went ahead and put the house up to get me out. Um, so after, after I got out, I had to go for um, arraignment where they formally read your charges. And so I was charged with uh, two counts of aggravated assault, one count of simple battery, and uh, kidnapping because I moved her more than 15 feet against her will. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. Because I'm, I'm worrying. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the counts. Like, why you was hit with so many counts? I mean, you, you only, you and the dude fought, I mean, fought. So that should only be considered so one count, they, right? They, because she pressed charges on me too. He pressed charges and she pressed charges. So that's why I was, that's why I was charged separately. She charged me, she pressed charges on me for assault and kidnapping. What? Pressed charges on me. And all of this, all of this because you wanted to be a good Samaritan. Being a good Samaritan. What, what was um, the reason? So, what was the reason? I, I, I need to know. I, I need to know, A. What was her logic in pressing charges against you, the person that came out to see how was her well-being, bro? Now, I, I believe um, I've never had any conversation with her, you know, about the situation, post the situation. Um, and I'm just speculating here because she was a victim of domestic violence and it had been ongoing domestic violence and they had got together after this incident. I believe that he put pressure on her to do that so that maybe he once again could get himself out of trouble. Because when, when I guess when they took him to the hospital, they took her to the hospital they took me to the hospital. The first day, nobody was initially arrested. So when they were at the hospital, I got stitched up. I went home. Nobody ever, no, there was no other police that ever talked to me. I was, I was interviewed on the way to the hospital in the back of the ambulance. And once I got to the hospital, police left. I'd never talked to another police officer, but I know they did talk to them. And so they only got their side of the story, which he never said anything about domestic violence. It wasn't until we went to a first hearing, you know, a after, after my formal charges was read, it, there's a, a pretrial hearing, you know, where the, the lawyers go in for discovery and, you know, things of that nature and presenting more evidence. And I had to be there for it. Um, well, I, well, I didn't know. I didn't have to be there because I had a lawyer, but I was there anyway. and. There was a there was a uh, there was a female judge, and she ended up. I guess while she was looking over the case, she called a recess to do some to do some research on her own, and that's when she found out that he already had an open domestic violence charge against her, and then she got the report from the officer from when I went to the hospital, and other witness statements that was there that my lawyer had had already gotten from neighbors saying that they had heard, you know, an argument and had witnessed a domestic violence situation and me intervening. And that's when, because the judge has the right, you know, judges told the prosecutor, I don't even know, you know, why this was a case that you wanted to try. And she, in front of me, she, you know, she, she asked the prosecutor, she said, I, you have a wife and, and daughter. She said, I've met your wife and daughter. We've gone to functions together. And her question was, if your wife or daughter was in that situation, what would you expect somebody like Mr. Ali to do? Walk by or intervene? His stance was why he wanted to try the case and why he bought it before, because it wasn't, he, he took the case to another judge, not the judge who was presiding over my case. 
to get it tried was that I went too far. That I did not have to do what I did. And being that I was in the field that I was in, that I knew that if I carried on in the manner that I carried on, I was going to cause grave or bodily harm to this man. Where's my leaf? Mm. You, you, you kind of figure that when your adrenaline kicks in, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much adrenaline and survival mode at that, at that point, right? And my, my goal, my plan, my, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to hurt anybody, you know, like, like I, I do love combat sports and things of that nature, but you know, I'm not a, a I'm not a, a argumentative person. I'm not a confrontational person and I don't want to see anybody hurt. You know, I, I wouldn't say I'm a pacifist, but I don't want to see anybody get injured, let alone at my hands because this man will never be the same again. You know, I really did hurt him. And and for a long time, like, I, you know, I, if my wife was here and she could attest to it, I used to wake up, you know, it, it, having nightmares from this situation. Because at the end of the day, I, I did change this man's life. Do you think, well, a after you, you know, you kind of semi won because you said the young lady did come back and and press charges to you again, and she actually won her case. But she won the civil case. Yeah, she won the civil case. Was you able to, you know, do a what do you call it? Uh, what, what, what do you call it? A return suit against them for filing against so, you? So uh, she won initially for thirty three thousand dollars, and the case retried and um or it went to a, a settlement dispute we had a mediator and things of that nature and it got reduced down to the state max which is five thousand dollars and at that point man i had been through so much you know i was a new father i was very young you know i was still trying to start my life and i just you know i was like man you know what F it. if this would just go away you know what i'm saying I'll pay her the money. And I did. I, I, I paid her. Wow. All, all that so that you can, so, so because you was trying to be a good Samaritan to this young lady and, and that's the thing she got. Yep. And I guess I know they ended up, they weren't married at the time. They did end up getting married. I don't know if they're still together. Um, I did come across her on on uh, on social media a few times. I, I've come across some of her stuff, like you know, people you may know. And I'm not gonna lie, I clicked on it, you know, to you know just to see and things of that nature. But um, and they remained living next door to my mother until my mother moved, which was about probably about ten years, which made it very awkward anytime I went to visit my mother. They they were Jamaican, I'm of Jamaican descent, you know, and so there there were some incidences when I went over to visit, you know, and things seemed like they might get confrontational or a little heated, you know. Um, they end up losing vision in, in one eye. Um, he he has a, a permanent speech impediment, and uh, his his left arm I, once again might have been karma. But he doesn't have full functional use of his left arm. And this this is all from the fight. Yeah, yep, yep. Now, when and when we were when because he sued me for like a hundred thousand dollars, man. Um, so when we were when we were doing that civil case, my lawyers were able to find some medical history showing that uh, when he had a stint in prison, that he had actually injured his shoulder while he was in prison. And that might have been, you know, like what, what happened between me and him might have further injured an already damaged shoulder. Now, I know you said um, that you clicked on her profile, um, you know, to check, you know, to check out what's going on. Did uh, did did you guys ever, you know, 
came back to, you know, the, the, the talk out the situation? Was you guys able to, you know, get some, I guess, clarity from that? Or it was well, just, it, it was just tension, never bothered well, type deal? When we were going through the mediation, um, when we were mediating, I did, um, I apologized to her. And I apologized to her family, you know, because that, you know, like I said, that my, my, I didn't want to cause her any harm at all. I was trying to help her. You know, and I did say, you know, if, if, you know, I was, I was given the opportunity to talk to her. We were in mediation, you know, and I said, if, if you honestly feel like in your heart that I wronged you, you know, then, then I, I understand, you know, I don't understand, but if you feel that way in your heart, who am I to judge what you feel in your heart? I can't, you know, I don't, I don't know what you feel inside. I can say it's wrong for you feeling that way. You know, I can say, I, you know, it doesn't make sense to me, but Hey, if that's your feeling, I understand that people have their own thoughts and feelings and ideals. And my goal was to never cause you any harm, but I'm not apologizing to his name is Earl. I'm not apologizing to him. Right. That he was, self, that was self-defense yep. pretty much right there. Ooh, man, eh? And and this it, it's unbelievable that this role situation, you know, kind of you know, kind of sparked your you know your testimony to come and 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 you know tell the people what actually happened. So, and I I appreciate the story, man. This this is crazy. I mean, you was a good Samaritan. You tried to help this lady out. Unfortunately, she was hurt in the process, but she felt in her heart to go after you for something that her that her significant of her significant other initially initiated. And, and you know, it, it, it ate me up for a while. It really did. And then about maybe five years later at Mall of America, um, you, you you can look it up. It's, it's on the news. It, it was a, a wealthy man that used to go around public places and he would throw out money. You know, he would show up with, with you know, tens of thousands of dollars, man, and, and throw it out. And he was on one of the, you know, like upper deck in Mall of America in Minnesota. And he was throwing out money. And a lady ended up, she was going for money, just like everybody else. She ended up breaking her wrist. She sued him. She won $3 million. <laughs> and Minnesota is my spot. I mess with Mall of America. I mean, I don't mess with it like I used to because it ain't nothing in there for, you know, a guy of my size. You know, I'm a big guy, 250 pounds, you know, uh, right you know, 40, you, man, you know, 46. yeah, you know, 42, you know, size 42. You go inside Mall of America, you'd be like, yo, let me get a three X. No, we only got twos. It, what, what's the or point? Ones, of, yeah. Or ones? What's what's the point <laughs> of me even coming up here showing you guys some love, man? Y'all y'all don't have nothing for me, so. But you man, that's shoes and something to eat. That, bro, <laughs> not even, bro. Not even the shoes, man. Not even the shoes. The shoes only goes up to thirteen. I wear a size fourteen See, I ain't and been a half. Here so long. I'll be in Minnesota next month. My brother actually lives in St. Paul. I was born in St. Paul. Okay, okay. Minnesota in the house. All right. Uh, Ali, man, I, I do appreciate you coming on sharing your story, man. So what do you, what, what, what would be your moral, man? What, what would be the moral to, you know, to these guys that, that, that might want to, you know, intervene on a female's behalf? I mean, I'm going to say this. There is a huge disparity when it comes to the safety and protection of African-American people, especially our women. You know, these are our women. These are mothers, sisters, daughters, aunts, nieces, you know. And I understand that if you have a family or you even want to have a family, I understand self-preservation. I understand that. But don't be afraid to do the right thing. You don't have to confront somebody physically. You could just make sure you get an accurate description. If you run across the street and yell, hey, stop it, just to maybe even get that person to pause for a moment. 
but don't be inclined to not try to stop someone from being hurt because you don't want to seem like a, a simp. Like if you're really afraid, don't get involved because then that was two people that got to be, it's got to be saved. But if, if, if you, if you honestly feel like, you know, if you see something wrong, like they say, if you see something, say something. You know, I, I think about all the young black men. I just moved from Chicago. You know, I, I left Georgia in 2005, not long after that incident. And I moved to Chicago. You know, it's a very dangerous place. All the young black men and women that get killed in Chicago and people don't say anything. We're never going to get things to change if we're afraid to speak up for what's right. You don't have to physically intervene, but you can get a license plate number. You can call the police. You know, hey, I, if you need to record, you record, I'm dialing 911. You dial 911, I'll record. You know, whatever. Start screaming. It's a fire. Anything. But just don't stand by and watch somebody get assaulted. Now, the situation with the lady with the brick, if this guy just grabbed the brick, and this is what I'm saying to, to, to my sisters now, if this guy just grabbed the brick and hit the lady and he runs off, I don't think nobody should chase him. I don't think nobody should be chasing him down and holding him down. Now, if you see a man standing over a lady and he's repeatedly hitting her with a brick, intervene. Don't watch this person die. But, you know, for sisters, there's not much we can do for a guy that picks up a brick and he hits somebody unannounced, you know, because I doubt he was like, yo, I'm going to go get this brick and hit this lady in the head. No, he probably was just a reaction thing. Bam. And he ran off. Let that man run off. Tell the police. Hey, he went west on, you know, Dallas Avenue. He's about six foot tall. You know, this weight. He got on this clothes. You don't have to chase him down. But you could definitely give a description. You could definitely be the one called 911. You could definitely be the one to go get her some ice or ask her if she needs to go to the hospital. And that's, you know, that needs to be the moral. Don't just let this lady walk around with her head busted open. So for the guys that was standing there, and if that's what really happened, I don't care how mad you was at her behavior before that. If you saw that she just got hit in the head with a brick, then call 911. Go get the lady a seat. Go get her a cup of water or something. You know, don't just stand there with your hands in your pocket. Even if you, even if you don't agree with her behavior before that. Oh, who makes my coffee? Who makes my coffee? Will someone explain to me why I'm the worst day of my life? My coffee tastes like shit. This man right here is just on fire, y'all. I'm, 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 I'm in awe right now. Uh, er everything you just said, I feel. I, I, I feel everything you just said, bro. And that's why, you know, again, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> with TikTok, man, it's just, it's just hard to, to, start to believe something now because now everything is is an elaborate production who's to say that the yeah. it, who's to say that the guy that 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 even came in and claimed that he was there and he didn't do nothing who's to say that he wasn't he wasn't a part of 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 the production you yeah, know exactly this is 2022 a lot of views too yeah, yes. yeah, he is. He's getting he a is. lot of views. He is. <laughs> this is 2023. I said 22. This is 2023, man. Everybody <laughs> has a freaking camera. Somebody is yep. always recording. I always say, always. I always say, I walk like somebody's recording me. I always say that. It, it, it ain't no way that is no other footage from that night i'm and again i'm still not taking away what might have had happened to the young lady but i'm flashback into the videos that i covered in the past the young lady up in houston somebody had a camera right there showed the uh, uh recorded a dude beating the lady to death on camera yeah. 
And shout out to the, the mother. The man in the Walmart parking lot that got killed intervening. That got recorded. Shout out to the mother that reached out to me for for that uh, uh, for that situation right there. Somebody, it, it's always somebody's recording. The young lady getting smacked in the face with the skateboard up in New York. I just re, I just yeah. reposted that video. Somebody was recording again, not to take away from from what happened to Roe, but you you broke out the camera. And instead of, you know, trying to show us the guy that was getting away or the car that he was jumping into, the, the, the focus was now getting on the men that was in the area. So now, yeah. so now we got that production right there. The only other video that came out is with the dude that claims that he was there, but there's no, there's no actual footage. You got a camera, bro. Why, why you wasn't recording? Guys, and I do think it's important guys, to get that stuff on tape. Right. Guys is always recording. People always want to put stuff up on the internet for stupid yep. stuff. And you mean to tell me this is something serious? A young lady getting smacked in the face by a brick if that was the case? Nobody decided not to break out their camera for that except for her. I I don't know. TikTok, man, I, I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not taking away from, you know, what might have happened to her. If it happened to her, I, you know, I'm so sorry that that happened to her. And for the guy that did it, it's definitely wrong. And we still don't condone violence <laughs> on women. Your coffee is normally made by Cato. Who the hell is that? Nope. Nope. Yeah, if that really happened, man, I hope... He's brought to justice. You know, I, I hope he, you know, he's arrested and he goes to jail. And, you know, um, but, you know, once again, like you said, man, living in, in the day of digital media where everybody leaves a digital footprint, you know, um, there's cameras, man. Like I, I live in Virginia right now, you know, and I, I, I work at a truck yard. I'm, I'm at I'm at work right now. You know, and I, my, my drivers are call sometimes, man, I'm stuck in traffic. I can go right on the Virginia Beach website, you know, the, the, the Virginia DOT website, and see if there's traffic where they say they're at. Like, that, that's the world we live in now. You know, my job, man, there's about 230 cameras out here at this truck yard. We had an a incident, just, just to give you an example. We had an incident where somebody said that we opened a container at this yard and that's why she didn't have what she was supposed to have in the back of the container. When the police did the investigation, they had her leaving our yard, driving down the road, getting on the highway, exiting the highway, where she pulled up and had people come help her unload the merchandise off the back of this container and returning back to our yard. Her whole route was, was recorded. And she tried to get away with that. The whole route. We watched everything. Watch me talk to her. Watch my security guards talk to her. Her leaving the yard. Her, like I say, exiting, going down this road. They picked her up passing the Hardys, a 7-Eleven, getting on George Washington. You know, like the whole thing, man. The whole thing was caught on tape. So I'm sure she uh, don't have her job no more. <laughs> No, she got she got fired. <laughs> they was uh, I think sixty five inch curve TVs. Ooh, ooh, she yeah, it was th like it was like three hundred, three hundred of them missing. Ooh, she thought she had to come up. <laughs> oh, they, man, like like I say, we sat with we sat with Chesapeake police, and 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 watched the video that they got, all of it. Even when she like she she started in Chesapeake, she ended up in Norfolk. We got all that on tape, down to the license plate numbers of the two trucks they came to help her. You know, we knew the, the exact height description of the dudes because they had the license plate. They knew exactly who they was. 
we was able to even see, like, zoom in and be able to get the numbers off the boxes. Ali, man, thank you very much for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it. Interesting story. Anytime, brother, man. Yo, you got the... I'm glad I met you, man. Big G's got it locked, boy. Want you to let me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, yeah, don't make a sound. And I want you to miss me when I'm not around. Come dive in my ocean, for my pool. My love is like lotion. It's all over you. You all over me, cause you my love. Tell you I don't fuck around Cause they got you insecure You and your